We return to our Birmingham service station and just in time to watch a pickpocket in action. The woman with the rucksack is his victim and the man in the grey top on the left is the thief. Except they're both acting. In fact, everyone in the queue is with us, apart from the man in the blue shirt. As the thief moves in, will our bystander notice? He clearly has. What's more, he's seen that other people in the queue have noticed too. Now, what's he going to do about it? The answer is nothing. After all, no one else in the queue reacts, so why should he? Chances are, you wouldn't have done anything either. Whatever the man in the blue shirt thinks he's seen, he's influenced by the apathy of everyone else in the queue. In more serious situations, this could have disturbing consequences. Liverpool Street Station in London. A drunk lies on the pavement. In fact, he's our actor, Peter, but these passers-by aren't to know that. And since he looks the worse for wear, not critically ill, they ignore him. Helping would be inconvenient or even risky. He lies there for 20 minutes and no one raises an eyebrow. This time, we've dressed Peter as a respectable city gent. How long before he's rescued now that he looks the part? Hello, sir. How are you today? I'm all right, then. Six seconds. She even calls him sir. And suddenly, everyone's a good Samaritan. Do you suffer from epilepsy? No. While you're lying on the floor in the rain? After a couple of minutes, even the police turn up. I would just hate to be in his position of feeling ill um, and nobody helping and walking past, so I'd just like to check that he was OK. I thought, well, it's wet, so he must really be ill because he's going to ruin his suit anyway. <laughs> Our actress Ruth takes Peter's place. She's not a drunk, but she's also not a city gent. How long before she gets help? Four minutes have passed, and 34 people have passed. People don't really want to know that they just haven't got the time. Well, they have got the time, they just don't want to get involved. But it's more complicated than that. If the street were deserted, a passerby would probably go to the rescue. But these strangers have silently formed a temporary group with a rule. Don't help. Like the woman who faced impossible questions in the service station, they're afraid to stand out from the crowd. So like the people in our smoke experiment, they won't take action if nobody else does, even against their own better judgment. This woman, for instance, has clearly spotted Ruth, but she conforms to the rule and does nothing. Watch what happens, though, when someone else helps. She suddenly finds herself in a different group with a new rule to help. You all right? Yeah. First, I thought she was dead. Then I saw, checked to see if she was breathing or not. And I looked around and I couldn't believe that no one had noticed her because there was a bloke that sat there just absorbed in reading a newspaper. Ugh. Peter's now having the same problem. This time, we've swapped his suit for casual clothes. He's not drunk, and we've asked him to act like he's in pain. Oh. Help! Help! Uh, help me! Please, somebody! Help me! Help me, somebody. Please help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Please, somebody help me. Please, somebody help me. I got into